For thousands of years, we have gazed in wonder at the Milky Way, arching across the night sky, believing that the entire universe unfolded from beyond its light. However, the real truth about the cosmos lies not in what meets the eye, but in the darkness that engulfs the stars. A mysterious new reality is emerging from the shadows. It seems that a strange dark matter somehow binds stars and galaxies together. And something we call dark energy, an even more enigmatic force, may be causing the expansion of the universe to speed up. Combine dark matter and dark energy make up 95% of the universe, but their actual nature remains a mystery. This discovery challenges our understanding of the fundamental laws of physics. This is the story of how a group of top scientists from around the world are striving to unravel the enigma. It is the tale of how the world's most powerful camera was fitted to a giant telescope in order to carry out the most comprehensive map of the universe to date. This highly ambitious endeavour to discover why the expansion of the universe is speeding up brings in the era of giant cosmic maps. The cosmic surveys and the laws of physics. Chapter 1 Why is the universe speeding up? From the ancient maps of Greece and Asia to the age of exploration and on into the 21st century, throughout time, people have created maps as essential tools to help them define, explain and navigate their way around the world. The world is an assemblage of parts that compose the universe. Hanging an antique map of the world on your wall says you understand your place on this great globe and you understand your place within the folds of time. We make cosmic maps with that goal in mind. The more we come to realize we are not the center of the universe, the more we need to know our place and how our fleeting existence weaves into the great tapestry of time. Astrophysicist Luis da Costa is a pioneer in cosmic map making. These pioneer maps of the galaxies started revealing something called the Great Wall and bit by bit what is known as the cosmic web, enormous filaments of galaxies that surround huge bubble-like voids. Nobody had an idea about how the, the galaxy distribution you know, was supposed to look like. So in fact, I mean, the old idea was that the universe was kind of a uniform and there were islands, you know, people already knew that there were clusters of galaxies and things like that. It was a great surprise, even from the very first survey, even before the Great Wall, uh, in the early 80s, that, you know, we had very empty regions. Over the last six billion years, the universe has begun to accelerate outwards. As gravity loses its grip on the universe, to an unseen force called dark energy. Evidence of this can now be seen out in the huge voids of space between filaments of galaxies. And the Great Wall was just a consequence. I mean, we basically, we have these sheets of galaxies that form walls that exist not only in the north, but in the south. So it's a part of the cosmic web. So you will have these big, large regions surrounded by these coherent structures surrounding them. So that's, that was a remarkable. So together with CFA, we were the first to have this panoramic view of the universe. So it was very exciting to find these walls. Great walls exist everywhere. But how can cosmic maps measure the universe's rate of expansion? Si tú consigues medir esta velocidad en objetos en dos tiempos distintos, de ahí puedes deducir la aceleración. 
para hacer esta referencia necesitas saber los tiempos. Y en cosmología, saber el tiempo es lo mismo que saber la distancia. Time inevitably figures in both stargazing and the mapping of the cosmos, as everything we see in the night sky belongs to the past. Tiempo es distancia. Lo que tú observas siempre corresponde a algo que está justamente a la distancia que tarda la luz en llegarte. Through a telescope, you can see galaxies and quasars that are billions of light years away. Their light is older than planet Earth. The idea of collecting light from such vast expanses in space-time makes us feel extremely insignificant in comparison, but doing so has extraordinary consequences. Los mapas cósmicos son máquinas del tiempo. Tenemos la maravillosa oportunidad de ver el pasado hoy en día. Tenemos que nos ponemos en el centro, en el punto este, ponemos la Tierra aquí o el Sol y miramos hacia atrás, eh, miramos cómo nos llega la luz del cosmos. Lo que pasa es que los objetos que están más cercanos provienen de tiempos también más cercanos, simplemente porque el, la luz que observamos de ellos ha tardado menos en llegar que los objetos que son más lejanos. We see the moon as it was 1.3 seconds ago, the sun as it was 8 minutes ago, bright stars as they were decades and galaxies as they were millions of years ago. Los objetos más lejanos son más antiguos y esta es la máquina del tiempo. Cada capa en nuestro mapa cósmico te da un tiempo más antiguo. De tal manera que existe un límite a esto que es la última capa que podemos ver, y esa última capa es justamente la radiación cósmica de fondo. El universo, en ese momento, tenía aproximadamente 300.000 años y corresponde a unos 13.000 millones de años eh, que ha tardado la luz en llegar desde esta última capa hasta nosotros. This is the oldest possible cosmic map. But what is the relationship between these two maps that looks so different? que lo que estamos viendo cuando comparamos los mapas de radiación con los mapas de galaxias es simplemente mapas del universo a diferentes tiempos cósmicos. Los catálogos como el Sloan, el Sloan Digital Sky Survey, nos muestran el universo en los primeros miles de millones de años alrededor nuestro. Sin embargo, en un futuro muy cercano vamos a hacer mapas más grandes, como por ejemplo el Dark Energy Survey o PAO. Estos mapas nos van a llevar más allá y por tanto vamos a tener el proceso de crecimiento de estructuras desde el principio hasta nuestros días. The simplest of observations, the darkness of the night, contains one of the universe's most complex mysteries. The universe is expanding, but why is it accelerating? We accompany the cosmologist, Enrique Gastañaga, on his visit to New York to meet his fellow physicists. Their conversations provide an insight into how theorists are tackling the mystery of dark energy. Pantheon, the great thinkers and the classical architectural designs of the University of Columbia inspire us with the ability to strive for excellence no matter what the challenge. And today, the biggest challenge in physics is dark energy. Just what is it? Dark energy is the term we use to refer to whatever energy that dominates the universe currently, that is responsible for making the universe accelerate. We call it dark energy because we do not know what it is. It doesn't emit light. And the only way we know its presence is by actually measuring very carefully how the universe expansion changes with time. We have learned a great deal about the cosmos by speaking its own language, that of mathematics. However, a new mathematical model has since emerged. From string theory 
mapped the multiverse, theorists have proposed that parallel universes and extra space dimensions could exist. Uni means one, so all that exists is the universe. But is that the whole truth? Today we have some reasons to believe there could be many universes out there so that our current observable universe is only a very small part of a very big universe. We usually use the term bubbles, kind of like a, a soap bubble, and we live inside one of these bubbles. However fascinating these theoretical ideas may be, this documentary will shed light on the dark secrets of our directly observable universe. It is through light that we will explore the dark forces of the cosmos and the fundamental laws that govern it. We will gaze out to the very edge of space and time, where a mysterious force fuels the accelerating expansion of the universe. We hope to discover how the universe came to be as it is. The expansion of the universe was predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, which explains the workings of the invisible on a large scale, how gravitational force dominates stars and galaxies, the whole universe in fact. The discovery of dark energy could undermine Einstein's theory and indeed revolutionize the field of physics. Do we need a new theory to replace that of general relativity? There have been a lot of attempts to modify Einstein's theory to explain this phenomenon. Namely, maybe when you go to very large scales, Einstein's theory breaks down. And that's why, counterintuitively, when the universe expands, it doesn't slow down, but in fact, it speeds up. I have also worked on these theories, but I have to say, experience of a lot of people to try to improve or modify Einstein's theory is that at best it's partially successful. So, was Einstein wrong? Well, basically, Einstein's theory is so such a beautiful, coherent framework. If you try to add anything to it or try to improve it, either you run into inconsistencies, which is bad, or it just makes the theory very ugly, aesthetically not very pleasing and complicated. At least at low energies, Einstein's theory is correct. The elegant theory of general relativity provided us with a marvelous new way of regarding gravity, not as a force, but as the result of a curve in space-time. So, what is the universe made of? Have you ever looked up into the night sky and wondered just how many stars there are in space? There are probably more than a hundred sextillion stars in total. This is a hundred times more stars in the universe than grains of sand on Earth. However, all these stars constitute not even 5% of the energy matter content of the universe. What about the other 95%? In 2013, the measurements of cosmic background radiation by the Planck satellite confirmed that the light-emitting universe constitutes a mere 5%. The rest is composed of 27% dark matter and 68% the mysterious dark energy that is accelerating its expansion. Let us receive the occult with an ovation. Stars regularly explode throughout the universe. They may be cosmic catastrophes, but they shine a torch into the darkness for scientists. They help illuminate the epic struggle between two invisible forces. Cosmologists are striving to comprehend these colossal forces at work and learn how to see beyond the darkness.
stars, the sun, the moon, the earth, people, everything you see on earth and in the universe has one thing in common, they are composed of atoms. The structure of the atom provides refreshing simplicity within the chaotic complexity of the universe. But dark matter is peculiar. We've never seen anything like it before. So, what exactly is dark matter? Dark matter makes up about a quarter of the universe, and we don't know actually what it is, but we know what it does. We know it cannot be made of ordinary matter, things that are made of atoms, things like all the world we see around us. It must be made of something more exotic. Dark matter is a component which is invisible, but we have to put it there in order to explain the motions of stars within a galaxy or the motions of galaxies within a cluster of galaxies. Matter that neither emits nor reflects light. For astronomers, the challenge of mapping the universe is like trying to map a continent from its city lights alone. Despite the enormity of the task, they've managed to create a three-dimensional map of how this dark matter is distributed across the universe, and that in itself is a remarkable achievement. Dark matter is not just an unseen component of the universe, it's actually crucial to our existence. In this simulation, we can see the complex patterns formed by dark matter. This tangle of filaments and mass is what we call the cosmic web. It is within these agglomerations of dark matter that galaxies such as the Milky Way would have formed. These gases combine and condense to form stars. Dark matter is the skeleton of the universe. Its structure allows galaxies to form. This has profound implications. Dark matter helped create everything we see around us. Without dark matter, there'd be no galaxies or stars. Without stars, there'd be no planets. And without planets, there'd be no life. It feels gravity, it exerts a gravitational force, and it makes things clump together. And we think that dark matter is really the engine by which galaxies formed and structures in the universe formed. We can visualize the role of dark matter by returning to New York to see the famous Christmas tree at the Rockefeller Center. Think of its lights and colorful beads as galaxies shining in the darkness. Of course, it's the branches of the trees that hold the lights. Dark matter holds galaxies, just as the branches hold the lights. Dark matter behaves like ordinary matter, and it is diluted by the expansion of the universe. Dark energy, on the other hand, we really don't know much about, other than that it has a gravitationally repulsive feature. So, what is dark energy? Dark energy is another mysterious component, and we still don't know what it is. Let's say, for example, if you throw a rock up into the sky, as the rock go up, you expect the rock to slow down. And that's because basically gravity is attractive. So the surprise about 10 years ago was that the universe expansion was actually not slowing down at all, it's in fact accelerating. 1998, the discovery of the acceleration is made public. As you know, those two teams led by three astronomers have been recognized by being awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics 2011 for the discovery of the acceleration of the universe. But we still don't know what is the acceleration due to? We still don't know if the dark energy is some correction to the curvature of the universe, or is it an actual substance that my cup of tea also has some dark energy in it and everywhere else in the universe has got that. Unlike dark matter, dark energy is not diluted by expansion, and this results in a gravitational repulsion that accelerates expansion.
now we've reached this point, let's go back to the crucial question. Why is the expansion of the universe speeding up? 15 years have passed and still nobody knows. However, it seems we won't have to wait too much longer. After all, the next big step in untangling this dark mystery has been happening for the last nine years. How is it going to be achieved? That is yet another chapter in the tale. The story of how the world's most powerful digital camera was fitted to a four-metre telescope under one of the clearest skies in the world. The camera was built as part of a project to make a cosmic map, the likes of which have never been seen before. Great discoveries need great demonstrations. On the plains of Illinois at Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, Fermilab is one of the world's greatest particle accelerators and leads the way not only in particle physics but also in researching the cosmic abyss from particles to galaxies. But why would a group of people who study collisions of particles in an accelerator want to map the universe with a camera on a telescope? Now there are new windows opening in the field of astronomy cosmology using galaxy surveys. This is particularly true since 1998, 1999, when two teams discovered that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. This has been interpreted as having substance called dark energy, which will make up 70% of the energy matter content of the universe, 70%. So certainly a lot of particle physicists have decided that we need to understand what is this 70%. And as far as we understand now, the only way of really attacking this problem is through our galaxy surveys. Fermilab was key in getting the dark energy survey started and is where the dark energy camera was assembled. The dark energy survey collaboration began in um, 2003, which was about the time when dark energy was really being accepted and this whole idea of the accelerated expansion of the universe was being understood. Blanco Telescope, they put out an announcement of opportunity to build a new instrument, then in exchange for the instrument to get time on the telescope, uh, to use the telescope and the camera to measure whatever you wanted. The reason we began it was because a few years earlier, astronomers had found had discovered that the universe was accelerating, the expansion was speeding up. And this was a, a real surprise. We wanted to understand this in greater detail. We wanted to address the question of why is the universe speeding up? In order to answer this question accurately, scientists of the Dark Energy Survey realized they would need to carry out a new kind of survey, far greater than any that had been done before. In order to do so, they would need to build a new camera and put it on a giant telescope in order to probe the nature of dark energy. The project's first director, John Peoples, worked very hard to initiate a collaboration between laboratories and universities. He got the whole project off the ground and was a kind of guiding light in the early days. When you undertake a project that's going to take 20 years, 10 years just to start, it's massive in size. You need many brilliant people at different stages. Of the so you need a collaboration. One person can't do it alone. So, in 2003 at Fermilab, Josh Freeman and Brenna Floher and others started seriously discussing the idea of building a camera big enough to carry out this huge survey. So here we are. Nine years later, we have a magnificent camera on a magnificent telescope and a great opportunity to do some superb science. The telescope, built about 40 years ago, is very robust. It is big enough and sturdy enough to hold a very heavy camera, the one that we have here. But it was not easy. Scientists had to build a replica of the telescope in order to assemble the DCAM. It took seven months to achieve. The next chapter takes us on a quest 
that will unite people from all around the world on a journey to this unique place, the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory. Meanwhile, we have more questions than answers. Will it be possible to work out what dark energy really is? Oh, okay, so it's too early to tell, right? We have high hopes to build an understanding of what is causing the accelerated expansion of the universe, but you have to ask me again in five years. Dark energy is a term that was coined for something we don't fully understand. Is it a substance that is a constant? Or is it the energy within a vacuum? Is it just the consequence of having misunderstood gravity? Or is it something completely new? There are many, many ideas for what this cosmic acceleration is caused by. 96% of the universe is in dark energy and dark matter. And we have no clue what they are. So I think we're missing something big, and I really hope that the, the dark energy survey data will help narrow it down and point us on the right path. In the meantime, the expansion of the universe keeps accelerating, and the cosmos keeps evolving, not only around us, but also within us. We live within the accelerating universe. The fundamental laws and dark forces that were created in the first second of time are still operating across the majestic ballet of the galaxies and in every beat of our hearts. Their history is also our history. The story of a whole dark universe is waiting out there to be understood. This is our current view of the universe and the dark forces that operate within it. But this is not the end of the story, not even the beginning of the end, but the end of the beginning. The end of building and installing the most powerful combination of camera and telescope ever seen. The beginning of carrying out the next big survey of the universe. The end of the beginning of solving the riddle of dark energy. But the work is ongoing. The script is still being written, and the ink is not yet dry. Join us to find out how the story ends. If you've got this far, you are part of this journey. And don't forget to look up into the sky. There's much to see, and so much more hidden in the darkness. <laughs>